Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara or Lara Likes Mascara and I do a lot of panning here on my channel. I am currently on a makeup no buy for the first four-ish months of 2024 and as part of a no buy I just find that what comes along with that is panning a lot of the products that you have in your collection because there's this real focus on using what you already have rather than bringing new things in. So today's video is going to be all about the products that I most want to get out of my collection in 2024. These are items that I want to finish this year. And I have some other panning series on my channel, namely a project pan series, which is a rolling series where, you know, as soon as I finish one product, then I roll something else in. This is a little bit different because these are just things that I'm working on throughout the whole course of the year with the goal of finishing all of them by the end of 2024. And I'm not going to roll new things in to this challenge. And also I have some non-makeup products that I will be including in this project, whereas I have really only focused on makeup in my project pans. I think a couple years ago, maybe in 2022, I tried to incorporate some skincare products. Like every update, I would have like one non-makeup product but in 2023 I sort of lent away from that and I pretty much only focused on makeup but in this I wanted to you know really reflect the whole of my beauty collection and so almost half of these products are non-makeup but they are still things that I very much want to get out of my collection. I just haven't really had the space to focus on them in my regular project pan series. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I also kept these two projects completely separate. So again, last year I had some overlap between products that I had in this year long plan to pan series and products that were in my project pan, but I just felt like that was getting a little bit repetitive and maybe a bit boring for me to constantly be talking about the same products from one video to the next. And so these products you will not see in any other panning series on my channel. And there are only 15 products. So that is a big change from last year. So this is my third consecutive year doing this type of project. In 2022, I tried to pan 22 products. And in 2023, I tried to pan 23 products. Although a couple of those I finished like really, really close to the beginning of the year. So it was more like a 20 to 21 project series. But last year, at the end of 2023 in my wrap up, which I will link here, I discovered that I only finished 15 of the products and I was happy with that number. Like 15 out of 20 is pretty good odds, but at no point did I think that I would finish everything. And this year I really wanna be more realistic about my approach. And so I have decided that since I finished 15 products last year, I'm gonna aim for 15 products this year and I'm really hopeful that I will actually finish absolutely everything over the course of 2024. So we're all about realistic goals this year. I'm in a much happier place with my collection, with my relationship to makeup, and I just feel like things will overall be better if I am realistic about my panning goals. So I have all of my products right in front of me here and I actually put them in a little basket little bag which makes it feel a bit fancier. I was planning to film two videos today so I had two cute little bags ready. It kind of makes me feel like I'm like shopping for products on my channel. I'm gonna try this going forwards because it feels a bit more exciting. I was going to do a very chatty get ready with me so I have all the products I was gonna use in here but I'm gonna save that for another day. It is the first sunny day in a while but this camera that I'm currently using is not as good at focusing as the other one that I used to use, which is currently in the shop in repairs, unfortunately. So when I get that one back, I think I'm gonna film that get ready with me. But here are all of the products that I am planning to pan over the course of 2024. Let's just get into it. Oh, I do wanna give a very quick plug. I have a podcast about movies with my friend Cheryl. If you like all things film, Oscars, film festivals, and chatting, you know, pop culture and cinema through a very 
fun modern lens definitely check out our podcast we upload every thursday we are currently doing westerns right now as a genre but very much like more modern type of westerns like westerns with a bit of a twist with a more feminist or like different angle than your typical john ford <laughs> western from like the 40s or spaghetti westerns from the 60s so definitely check out my podcast i will link it below and here but let's get into the makeup content right now that was a lot of preamble today i feel like i had a lot to set up but let's start with some hair products and i'm starting this week because i think these well at least the first one is probably the one that i'm going to finish first because i planned out what these products were going to be in the last few weeks of 2023 it is now in the second week of 2024 so i've actually made a little bit of progress on some of these products this you have seen these before <laughs> i've really been trying to finish them off over the past year they were in my plant a pan series last year i have very few products that were in my plant a pan series last year but these ones are pretty close to the bottom this hair oil honestly i've been using it pretty religiously over the past couple weeks just on sort of like second or third day hair to smooth things out in the ends and i probably have like two or three uses left I didn't think that I was that close, but I've already had to like turn it upside down to get product out. So I'm really optimistic about this one. It will be finished by next time, mark my words. This one is the No Tangle Spray. However, I've had it for so long that it is no longer a liquid. It is a solid. <laughs> the texture has completely changed, but it's still a good product. Like I find that it really does help me to detangle my hair. It makes it easier to comb through. There is probably about this much product left. It's not as versatile as a hair oil. Like I probably wouldn't use this in second or third day hair just because it it feels like something that should rinse out or it, it you know, it feels like a conditioner, like not the kind of thing that you leave in. Whereas a hair oil definitely feels like the kind of thing that you leave in. So this one, I'm not sure if it will be done by next time. I will probably still be figuring out how to incorporate this into my routine. Yeah, and I'm also planning to retint my hair in the next couple of days. I'm thinking of going darker, like more of a copper, dark, like a caramelly, copper color we'll see i'm sure you'll see it in subsequent videos i'm just not sure quite when i will be doing that stay tuned so those are the first two products let's talk about a sunscreen this is the ordinary sun care mineral uv filters spf 30 with antioxidants real love hate relationship with this i think it's my second or third tube but i will not be purchasing it again in some ways i really like it because it is a super matte sunscreen and by the end of the day i really like how this looks under makeup i feel like it just gives me a really like natural look to my skin but it is so white like it's got such a white cast that at the beginning of the day i feel like my skin just looks so pale i don't know if you can tell right now I've got a little bit on my face. I don't usually do the whole face, just sort of like under my eyes because this is good for sensitive skin and I am a bit sensitive under my eyes, but like fully rubbed in and so, so white. This is not great. I have been like squeezing it more and more aggressively lately so there's not that much product left but the issue is because i don't use it on my whole face because then it is just like way too stark if it's everywhere unless i'm not leaving the house or anything that day it takes a while to get through so i would love to have cut this open by the next update i'm not expecting to have finished this by next time but cutting it open i think will be a great first step because once you cut it open then there's a lot more product but that is my goal with this one. Okay, let's talk mascaras. I know it's a bit strange to put mascara in a project pan, but because I have such a large collection of mascaras, unless I focus in specifically on one or a couple of them, I'm just gonna have fun and use all of them, in which case none of them will get used up. We've got two that you would have seen before and then one that I haven't put in a project pan before. So these two, we've got the Maybelline Mega Plush Volume Express in waterproof. There is not very much left in this. And in fact, I'm currently using it as a brow gel. It's a weird wand for a brow gel, but 
I find that it does the trick. Oh, I might have got some right below my brows there. I think I need to add contact solution to this again soon because it is quite dry at this point, but I still wanna get every last drop out of it that I can. It's so hard for me to tell with mascaras, but I would love to get this done by the halfway point of the year. I used to love, love that mascara. And then we've got this Clinique one. This is a mini, so I don't understand how it's not finished yet, probably because I don't use it because it's not my favorite, but I found that when I combine it with the Bad Gal Benefit mascara, it looks pretty good. Don't love the wand on this one. Don't love the formula. Don't love that it's not waterproof, but it is still usable. This was in my plant pan last year. Didn't manage to finish it up. Would love to finish it up this year. Again, no idea of what kind of timeline that's gonna be. And then the new addition to this makeup painting series is the Milk Kush Mascara. Again, this is a mini. Let's see if they're the same size. The Clinique one is, doesn't say the volume, but they look like they're about the same size. I went in and out of liking this one. I like how big the brush is. Do you see how it can like barely fit in the tube? Love that, love a full wand haven't reached for this in ages because I've been focusing on other mascaras but I I think I like this so it would be nice to switch things up because I feel like I haven't reached for a new mascara in such a long time I don't know if this will be done by the end of the year this is this is kind of a question mark but if I finish those other two then I think I have a real chance at it okay next up Let's move on to some lip products. So last year I had a lipstick project pan, which was very successful. I haven't really decided if I'm doing a lipstick project pan this year, just cause I don't know. I obviously have a lot of project pans going on at the moment, maybe in the second half of the year. I'm also planning to do a blush roulette series. So that's also, I mean, not really project pan, but kind of in that spirit of like a long-term year long project, but some products that you saw in my lipstick project pan last year or at least my graveyard project pans were these two lip butters from revlon and i very much like both of these actually but i just think I, it's time to get them out of my collection because if you remember these revlon lip butters you know they're old they're very old they're still in great working condition they still smell good they still feel just as great on the lips no change in consistency but you know we gotta be moving them out so this is my favorite one i used to have four shades i panned one i decluttered one two left so this is in red velvet great shade for the winter i think i'm gonna put some of this on right now actually very smooth you can use just a little bit or really work it up and I do have a mark here, so let's see if I've used any up since this marking. Oh, absolutely nothing. No, there is there is no mark to be made. <laughs> so clearly I haven't been using this one very much, but I do very much like it. I am trying to get use out of it now that it's the winter because I don't wear dark lips in the spring. So I figure I only have maybe three more months to work on this. I would love to see some progress on it. And then, you know, I'll probably take a break from it during the summer and then maybe pick it back up again in November. So this kind of depends on how aggressively I use it. Could go either way. This one is in Wild Watermelon. This is one of my last remaining bright lip shades. I really don't like bright lip colors on me. This is much more of a like orangey coral pink shade, but you are able to sheer it out a little bit so it's not as offensive as some other ones. This one also have not really seen any progress on, so I will just leave that there. But yeah, this one I will not be reaching for over the next couple of months. So next update, you probably won't see any difference, but starting in April through to like September, I will be able to get some use out of this. I actually fell back in love with this this past summer. So yeah, I have hope that I will be able to use it even though it is such a bright lip shade. So that is kind of a duo. And then we've got another duo. You might not be surprised to see these. These are the Revlon lippies. They were in some project pan last year. I don't know if it was my plant pan series or a different one, but I actually really do like these, but again, they're so old that I'm like, 
come on, we gotta, we gotta hurry things up here. I did actually recently use the nude shade. This is in Rikujian as a blush, beautiful blush, but you know what? I should be, I should be swatching these. That is that bright watermelon one. And then this one is much more of a pinky nude because it is so, how would I describe it? It's not a very like solid product. It's very squishy. You have to use a lot to see anything. And so every time that I use this as a blush, I have to sharpen it. Let me, let me demonstrate here. So when I use lipstick as blush, I put it in the center of my face, I take a brush and then apply it. Okay. So you can see there's not that much left on the nub there. This is about how much I would use for blush and look how much it's gone down. So if I want to use this up quickly, then I can just use it as blush and it'll be so fast. I think that's probably how I am going to get use out of it. I do, as I mentioned, have my blush roulette. I also got a couple of new blushes as presents. And then I have some other cream blushes that I am trying to pan this year. So I'm not going to be able to be that dedicated to it. But if I use it like once a week or so, that will probably be enough to really see progress on this. It's just so like melty. I think that's the, that's the word for it. Can you see how it's kind of melted there? Now what do I do with this? <laughs> Guess I'll like apply some to my lips. I'm just gonna have like seven different lip products on today. And I have no idea how it looks. Okay, and then this one, I have not tried to use it as blush. This is in the shade Cruella, but I have found that it makes a beautiful pairing with another lipstick I have, the YSL. I will have to demonstrate it in some video or I'll see if I can find a screenshot of me wearing it or a picture. This was what I wore on New Year's. The two of them paired together, beautiful. Just so nice. This is such a nice red. Very deep, but it fades beautifully. Obviously I have a lot more of this one left. Have I marked these? Yes, I have. So let's see if there's been any progress since my lipstick project pan. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, so me using it as blush a handful of times was very effective. Look at that. So much progress. And then Cruella. Yeah, a little bit, of, a little bit of progress. So don't worry, I will mark these for next time. You can see I haven't used this one as much because, you know, blush is a lot more effective. You need a lot more over the cheeks than over the lips, but happy with that progress. And I'm optimistic that I can finish both of these by the end of the year because I have found ways to make them work. I think that was the issue last year that I just couldn't figure out how to use them. I didn't love them each on the lips by themselves, but now I know what I can do. Let's move over to some skincare minis. I feel like a lot of these are, are like a set. <laughs> We've got the, the Revlon lippies, the NARS lippies, the hair duo, and then these two glow recipe products. So these were the Sephora birthday gift from just last year, 2023. So, you know, I've only had them for six months. Ooh, the BHA, PHA product, this has eight month expiration. So, <laughs> I guess that's like February. I mean, I can probably stretch it a little bit until like April, but I haven't even used up half of this. And the reason is that I have another BHA, AHA type product. So I switch between the two of these and I don't use them every day. I did for a while use my Paula's Choice BHA product every day. And that led to more skin problems than I had had before without using it. So I found that a good in-between is using every other night or every third night. And because I have two to switch between, that means that this only gets used, you know, twice a week max. And I use only a little bit because I don't want to overdo it on these products because of my, you know, issue in the past with BHAs. So I guess I need to I don't know, that's kind of tricky because I don't want the other one to expire either. But either way, I do need to focus on using this. This one, obviously you can see is almost done. It's a smaller product, first of all, but also because it is these like dew drops, I find it a lot, like I need it a lot more. And this is one of those annoying products where you can't actually get everything out 
because the stick thing inside doesn't go down far enough so I've had to lay it on its side for the past little while and like painstakingly wipe things out like a little bit comes out it's, it's just so annoying like why do they make it this way nothing comes out if I press it I don't want to do it just in case something comes out but yeah very annoying so on the whole I have actually really enjoyed both of these but because they're both skincare products, they do expire this one in 12 months, which is annoying. It should be the opposite. Like this one should take longer to expire because it takes longer to work through, whatever. Yeah, need to get these moved out. This one will be fairly quick, as you can tell. I have another product that serves this kind of step that I'm trying to get used up. So I haven't reached for it in a while, but once that is done, I will move on to this. Oh, I'm blabbering on a little bit. We're getting to that point in the video, but this will be used up by next time. I don't know. Have you used this for longer than eight months? And has it been okay? Let me know about that. We've got another lip product. No surprise here. <laughs> Final lip product in this project. This is the, I think NYX, is it? Chaos lipstick. And this has actually really grown on me. This was in my project pan. I think I'm like the second half of 2023 lipstick project pan and i feel like i'm gonna see a lot of progress since last time because i previously would only use this like at home when i wasn't seeing anyone but now what is what is that thing where you like you you get used to something so you like it more i have been wearing this so much that now i like it on myself and now i wear it willingly out of the house and now I like red lipstick. I don't know, it must be like the whole December holidays thing, but I've been wearing red lipstick a lot lately. So let's see how we're doing here. I thought I had a lot of progress, but clearly not. It's just a couple millimeters. But either way, I'm enjoying this more than I used to. And I wanna get it out this year by the end of the year. That seems very realistic because I use lipstick very frequently, but I'm guessing that's something that it will take pretty much all year to get used up and I'm fine with that. Okay, last two products. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. Now, I know some people love setting spray, but for whatever reason, I just forget to put it on. I think it's because I only have this one left and so I haven't been like forcing myself to use it. I'm not really worried that it's gonna expire, but I'm also not trying to get through this product so that I can move on to the next one because I don't have a next one. And so I just always forget to reach for it. I don't know if I wanna put this as part of my like daily makeup routine, but I can certainly use it like a couple times a week. Whereas I've probably been using it like <laughs> once a month, if that. A lot of product left in here. It says six months expiration date. I'm just not believing that, but I would love to have this done by the end of 2024. So no time soon, but you know, end of the year goal. And then we've got one final product. So this is a hand cream. This is the Body Shop Hemp Hardworking Hand Protector Cream. This is very good. I do not like the smell at all, but I do find it effective. But I have so many of these little creams, like this exact container. I have three of the L'Occitane hand creams like this. And I just need to put this in my bag so that like when I'm out on the go, I have a hand cream to reach for. I just looked at my hand now. It is getting a little bit dry. I could definitely use some hand cream now, but I haven't been in the habit of using a hand cream because you know, during the summer and fall months, I'm fine. It's just in the winter that my hands get a bit drier. So I need to put this in my purse and bring it with me wherever I go. And because it's my least favorite scent, I just wanna get this one out sooner rather than later. It says 12 month expiration date. I've definitely had this for at least three years. It might be my partner's actually, but he never reaches for it. Honestly, would love to have this done by summer, but I'm just gonna say end of 2024 is my goal with this one. So that is everything. Those are all 15 products in this year's Plan to Pan series. Let me know what you think of this much more realistic approach. I think it'll give me a lot more space to focus on these products because it's fewer things. That's just what I want to do this year. So without further ado, let's talk about a book that I have been reading lately. A lot of you probably recognize this book. It is maybe Taylor Jenkins Reid's most popular book. That Maybe that's Daisy Jones and the Six. I think they're a little bit neck and neck. It has become more popular as she has become more popular as an author, but this came out back in 2017. And I just wasn't that interested in reading it for a while, but it kind of got to the point where people talked about it so much. I was like, 
I need to read this book. It is fun. It is definitely a page turner. I am between a third and a half in. It's about a woman named Evelyn Hugo, but it's not really. It's about a journalist who has been hired to write her life biography. But through that, we go back in time and we learn Evelyn Hugo's whole history. She was a an actress in like old school Hollywood in like the in the 50s and she had seven marriages. She's very fun to read about her whole life. It is definitely a fun book. I think the Taylor Jenkins read just like walks that fine line between like fun and literary fiction, you know? So she's more accessible to people who prefer to read romances or like lighter fare. And yeah, I think she's a good writer. So definitely enjoying this. Don't think it's gonna be in my favorite books of the year, but I kind of understand the hype. And it's also just like fun reading a fun book. I don't read that many fun books. It's nice how quickly this is going by and how not dense it is. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye.